me, every one of you listening to me tonight, you will receive a miracle. Nobody is permitted to walk out of this meeting, whether on ground or online, without receiving a tangible miracle. I prophesy over you, every door of opportunity before you opens now. I prophesy over you, every challenge in your life goes down now. In the name of Jesus. Everybody hearing me now, the devil suggested to you that you have come to the end of the road. I prophesy, my God shall make a new way for you. He said, God shall make a way where there is no way. Even if the road has ended, in the name of Jesus, by the power of prophecy, I decree a new way is open for you. That thing God told you, and it looks as if it's too late, this year is over. You will have double for your trouble. From today, every day, receive a miracle. And everything that is meant for this year that you have not received, I decree and I declare, take delivery of it now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sit down for a moment. Under paracados. Many times, people fail to operate in the miraculous because it doesn't make sense. Luke 5, 3 to 5, where I read for you, the guys toyed all night. The same river. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's waste. In fact, the best time was when they were toiling. When it was quiet. At night, the water was not troubled. You could determine the direction of the ocean waves. They knew where to sail from and to arrest every fish. They did that again and again and again. It didn't work. But Jesus said, launch into the deep for a great catch. And they said, we have toyed all night. We remember what we have done. We have tried our best. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. And when they obeyed, they were not stranded. If the Holy Ghost begins to prompt you, and you are a spiritual man, you know that that is where the answer is. No matter how silly it may appear. The Bible said the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And he said the weakness of God is stronger than men. When God gives you a command, gives you a prompting, gives you a signal, follow it. This is what the fathers of old knew. In 1 Kings 18, from verse 41 to 45, Elijah wanted rain to fall. After three and a half years of drought, he kept praying. He said, go and check. He kept praying. At the seventh time, Elisha came and say, said, I saw something that looked like a feast of a man. He said, that is it. Go and tell the king. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. The guy calculated a little sign as a sound of abundance of rain because he had spiritual intelligence. That little sign in the spirit can overtake a generation. And true to his word, a heavy rain came and ended the drought. Most of you have violated too many signs. That's why you have not received miracles. But when God creates a system and a platform like this in a miracle service, is to help you receive regardless of the mistakes that you have made. There is something available for you that makes it an error for you to walk in lack. You are not designed to walk in lack in your health. You are not designed to walk in lack in your finances. You are not designed to walk in lack in anything that has to do with possession. Every area of your life where there is lack is also an alarm system of ignorance. Something is not known. That's why that lack is there. Because as far as God is concerned, there is an exceeding riches. Riches beyond quantification that is available to the same. But how do you access it? You see from verse 17, Paul used four key words. Number one, he said you need wisdom. Wisdom is understanding knowledge and how to apply it. So it's like the ability to acquire facts and know how to use them. And then he went further. He said revelation. Revelation, wisdom is Sophia. Revelation is apocalypsis. It means opening you up 
into realms of possibilities. And then the third word he used, he used the word, go back there, enlighten. That means light is shone forth. In fact, he went further to buttress it. That word is fortizo. It means light has come. Now, see the way this hall is. You came here because you knew this hall was here and you also were aware that a meeting will go on. And so you navigated yourself here. That's Sophia. And then when you got here, if the doors were locked, you wouldn't have participated in this service. So anything happening in this service, you would not have enjoyed it. So the door needed to be opened for you to enter. So why Sophia is your understanding of how to access this place, Apocalypse, which is Revelation, is your access into the auditorium where the action is taking place. Now, if you walked into this auditorium and all the lights were off, the first thing that would have happened to you would have been an accident. You would have collided either with the table or with the chair and injured yourself. Meanwhile, this is where you should have been blessed from. But the moment light was shone in this place, you could trace your way to a chair and you sat down comfortably ready to receive. So Paul was telling us everything we need for life is already available. But we need to have sufficient revelation. First of all, facts on how to get to where it is. Number two, access into where it's available. And number three, illumination so that we can take it. The moment revelation comes and these whole things are in place, you can pick anything from the realm of God at any time. Any miracle whatsoever, be it a health issue, be it a financial issue, be it a promotional issue, it is at the mercy of revelation. Peter spoke in this same light. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, he said, according as his divine power, he said he has given us to us all things that pertains to life and to godliness through the knowledge, through the epignosis, experiential knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. What does that mean? The moment you have knowledge, you will have access to all things that pertain to life and godliness. So your problem is not all things that pertain to life and godliness. Your problem is an ignorance that you have not been able to surmount. The moment you know how to access a reality, that reality becomes yours. And so many times we face our problems, we think what we call the problem is the problem. And God is telling us that thing is not a problem. A beautiful uh, scripture that my brother Jeremiah just quoted a moment ago, Romans 8.32. He said, if he did not withhold his only begotten son, but freely gave him to us. He said, how shall he not with him, not without him, with him, give us all things. That means as far as God is concerned, he's not withholding anything from you. You see, most times we pray and we are begging God, hoping that God will look at our condition and be merciful. When he gave Christ, he released all his mercy. It's not every manifestation that depends on God. God has made too many things available for the taking. But you need to know. See, why do you think we tell people about the wonders of God? It's not to increase your knowledge about what God can do. It's to show you channels to take action. They told you that somebody was blind. He kept shouting. He wouldn't let God rest. Son of David, have mercy. Son of David is a channel. Now you have understanding. So you too, if you have problem, in the morning you wake up. Father, I receive answer. Father, in the afternoon. Father, in the night. Father, in the midnight. Father, a point will come. God will say, what do you want? So the reason they told you about the story of Bartimaeus is to show you how to route faith. They said the things that were written aforetime, Romans 15 verse 4, they were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. That's why the stories are written. They told you, Cornelius, his prayer and arms giving became a memorial. God encountered him. Really? My God, in the next six months, God will receive enough. You wake up in the morning, when you finish, you give an offering. You pray in the afternoon, you give an offering. You pray in the night, you give an offering. You pray the next day, God will show up. You have opened the gate of Cornelius. What do you want? When you shout, you have opened the gate of Bartimaeus. What do you want? When you touch, you have opened the gate of the woman with the issue of blood. What do you want? Because all of those things teaches you how to walk the corridor of faith. You are not reading the Bible to become a theologian. You are reading the Bible to understand how to put your faith to work. So faith are actions taken 
from the standpoint of understanding. That's why the Bible said in James 2 19, they say faith without works is dead. He said, Oh, ye vain man, knoweth not that faith without works is dead. He said, Thou believest that there's only one God, thou doest well. He said, The devil also believes and trembles. And in verse 26, he said, As the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Many people, their faith is dead. Why do you think we share testimonies here? The Bible said, The testimony of the righteous is just making wise the simple. So somebody tells you, I fasted for three days and something happened. Uh -huh. Fasting is a gate. You check the Bible. Is it correct? You enter your own. Somebody told you, I showed mercy to somebody and I obtained mercy. Oh, is that true? You check the Bible. If it's consistent, you show mercy. These are keys. So when we testify, apart from the fact that God is glorified, we are showing you channels. That understanding fortifies you now to take action. So when you are taking action, there is a basis. That's why the Bible said, through faith, Sarah receives strength to conceive because she judged him faithful that promise. So there is a basis. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38, the Bible said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Now he was around for 30 years. He didn't operate the miraculous. The moment the anointing came, the Bible said who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. When the anointing comes upon your life, God is with you. So the power of the anointing is God with you. So anything you are doing, you are no longer doing by your own strength. There is God behind you walking. So people may see you, they think it's what you are doing. What you are doing, you are a puppet. It's God walking behind the scene. The moment God encountered Moses, he said, drop your rod. The guy dropped it, he became a serpent. Take it up by the tail. That rod became the rod of God. What does that mean? God is with you. When Moses came before the Red Sea, stretch forth thy sword, thy rod. Rods don't part sea. But we saw what happened behind the sea. The Bible said with the blast of his nostrils. So anything you are doing in the natural, God is doing the corresponding in the supernatural. So the answers that you command is now different from what men do. And you know the beautiful thing? Jesus was not the only one anointed. He made sure he created that possibility for us as well. So when he redeemed us, he prepared us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So he told the disciples, Luke 24, 49, tarry in Jerusalem. Something is coming upon you. He showed back again in Acts 1, 8. He said, not many days from now, you shall receive what I received. Acts 10, 38, he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Acts 1, 8, you shall be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And in Acts 2 verse 4, he said, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, he said, they were together in the upper room and suddenly they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind and the place where they were was filled with the Holy Ghost and cloven tongues as of fire appeared on their head. Now, see what happened. That was the day the Holy Ghost came into the earth to start his dispensation. Now, he's no longer coming from heaven. He's already on earth. And so anybody that believes now, the moment you believe, you say, Lord, fill me with the Spirit. It comes upon you. And every one of us carries that anointing. In fact, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27, he said, you have an unction from the Holy Ghost. And that unction is in you, teaching you all things. So when you were, when you were born again, you were anointed within. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you speak in tongues, you are anointed upon one of it transforms you to become like God, the other empowers you for a glorious life. So the reason we know God, the reason we become like God is the anointing within that came at salvation. But the reason we receive miracles and do wonders is the anointing that comes upon us. So any believer who is born again, if you have not yet received the Holy Ghost, make sure you receive your own tonight. Because when the anointing comes upon your life, it becomes the gate for the miraculous. Number one, it subdues every devil. He said, when Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, what did he do? Healing all that were oppressed. You stop the government of darkness. And that's not all the anointing does. In Isaiah 10, 27, he said, the yoke shall be broken. He said, the body shall be lifted off your shoulders because of the anointing. So the anointing came to remove bodies. Anything that is a yoke, anything that is a body, because the anointing is upon your life, it will give way. So all you need to do is to stare the anointing. The anointing came on an errand. An errand of empowering you to advance kingdom. 
and an errand of empowering you to live in liberty. So you cannot tolerate any yoke anymore. You cannot tolerate anybody. When you notice there is something on your life that is frustrating your existence, shut your door. The reason we don't have it now is because we don't know how to receive it. This is why you need light in order to access everything that is available to you. And there are many ways to get light. But one of the ways I will focus on tonight is receiving the sent word. Many people don't know when the word of God comes to you, it doesn't only come to illuminate you. It comes to bet what you need. There are two things about the word of God. Number one, the word of God is creative. Number two, the word of God sustains what is created. In John chapter 1 verse 1, it said in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. It said the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Now, when people receive the word of God, they think it's a theological fact. That's why they don't have miracles. But for those who have understanding, when the word of God is coming, they know that the power to create everything needed is what is coming. So as they catch it, they see it as their answer. You may not have money, but you walk into a place and God says, you will prosper. The moment you hear it, you know that everything needed for your prosperity, from wisdom to favor to human connection to opportunities, is all encapsulated in that word. So as you catch it, you can bank it. That is your wealth. Because in the word is encoded the capacity for creation. And the word does not stop there. It said the word sustains all things. That's what the Bible said. Hebrews 1 verse 3. It said he sustains all things by the word of his power. So when the word creates, the word sustains it. Why do you think the earth is still here? Listen, nothing can destroy this world. They, they do research. They talk about global warming. They talk about emission. They are just being scientific. Do you know how many gases are in space? Earth. There is a height you go to in space. Earth will become like dust. There are over 500 galaxies in the Milky Way. And the earth is just one planet. You, do, do, you, you, do you get what's going on here? And then one scientist sits somewhere and they say, Ah, too many gases. See, no gas can destroy this world. If God doesn't want this world anymore, He will come and destroy it. Because it was the world that created it. The world will sustain it come what way. This, this system can go down. Anything God, the Bible says, whatsoever He doeth abides forever. If it is the world that created it, forget it. It will last forever. And so when you want to walk in miracles, what you do is to search for the sent word. The moment the sent word comes, you may not understand everything, but you know your prison door is about to open. The Bible said in Psalm 105 verse 17, it said he was locked in chains and bound in fetters. It said until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him and the king sent for. How did the king come into the equation? Because when the word comes, the connections that you need begin to realign. Somebody will tell somebody about you and they will tell somebody about what you do and somebody will connect somebody to connect to you. All of that is a complex algorithm provoked by the life that is in the world. He caught it and the, the answer came from the palace. How can a prisoner access a king? Somebody that he begged two years ago, please remember me. All of a sudden he woke, he woke up and said there is an interpreter of dream. You think he remembered him? No. The word woke him up at the right time. Because if he said it two years ago, it wouldn't have worked. Who are you a butler to come and tell the king to invite somebody? You don't have such rights. But he gave it at the opportune time. The king was troubled. And God was the one that put that fear in the king. So that when the guy shows up and speaks, he becomes the answer of Egypt. And after he spoke, the king said in as much as God have given you this wisdom. He said there is no one in your class. According to your word shall the nation be ruled. He said nobody shall be greater than you in this kingdom except me and it's by reason of the throne. Because words came. Psalm 107 verse 20 said he sent his word and delivered them from all their affliction. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 9 he said he sent his word to Jacob a lighting upon Israel. You see somebody say, I have received my miracle. When the apostle was speaking, I believed. What? Me too, I believe. I cannot live here without my own. 
there's an understanding now it becomes a basis for action that's what that's the kind of faith that engenders miracles you ancient zion skin kadosh kadosh you were mighty on your throne you reign you reign you reign you your Bible many times God will give instructions to prophets everything he does with them is a write it as a memorial another generation will come that these things will become the basis for believing so Jehoshaphat dared to believe God because of the wonders that he did in the past even Gideon when they were in crisis he said where is the God of our fathers that did wonders that was the only thing he was hanging on. Is it not the same God? If he did it for the fathers, he can do it now. And that has been the pattern. So Paul came in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 13. 4 verse 13. He said, according as it is written. They believe and have spoken. We having the same spirit of faith, we believe and therefore we speak. 2 Corinthians 4 13. We having the same spirit. And he said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hear this. Sometimes when I'm going out for a meeting, you know what intoxicates me? Is it not the same way Paul went out? Is this not the same way Smith Wigglesworth went out? Is this not the same way A. A. Allen went out? Is this not the same way Ora Roberts went out? Why will I go out and my case will be different? And I say, Father, show yourself strong. And as you stand there, sometimes the moment you start talking, the same thing that came to their meeting will appear in your own. Because God is not a respecter of man. If he did it for one, he can do it for all. It's a system of routing miracles. Take action based on understanding. It's a key for the miraculous. Sit down. to me now you are telling yourself lord if one person will be healed in this service if it's because of this message if it's because of this atmosphere if one person is healed me too i must be healed because i also believe i'm also under the same atmosphere i'm also hearing the same message i can't live here without a miracle there is an understanding and so you take action and you see the hand of god manifest heavily on your life these things are not hard god makes them easy so that everybody will be blessed you don't need to be a doctor of theology to receive miracle in fact sometimes when you do too much theology it becomes difficult the moment you are anointed things begin to happen and if you are baptized in the spirit you have more than enough anointing for any miracle the fivefold ministry is not for miracles the reason we do miracles is because most times be believers are not ready to do the work. The Bible said in Ephesians 4 11, it said God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So it is you that you do crusades. The reason we have to go do crusades is because most of you are not ready. You are the one to raise the dead. Our job is to coach you, teach you what you carry, and teach you how to use it. So when the body of Christ begins to mature, you will hear that stadium is packed. They say, who is that? They say, Sister Martha. Not Prophet Peter. Not Apostle Nathaniel. They say, a village is experiencing revival. They say, what happened? They say, Sister Mary went there. And when she went there, something began in her parlor. After a while, the king was healed. And then the whole village gathered. Something happened. They say, what happened? They say, wisdom went there. Because Philip went to Samaria. He preached Christ there. 
the city was full of joy not the apostles it was when revival started that peter came to bring order and government but it takes the anointing see you carry something i was teaching them on tuesday i told them when you start growing in this thing then you start finding signs because when you stir your anointing you will discover that it comes with sickness sometimes you will notice that your hand becomes numb and every time your hand is numb sicknesses are addressed sometimes you notice something's moving on your head and when something's moving on your head anything you say happen so what do you do mahiba kakara you stare yourself until that movement begins when that movement begins you prophesy to a business in the name of jesus walk when that movement begins you prophesy to a family i rebuke them because now you know how to stare the anointing to overflow and every one of us carries the anointing i don't know the flavor of your own anointing but i know mine the one me i carry provokes favor the one me i carry provokes speed the one me i carry provokes healing it provokes miracles and it provokes word of knowledge so many times when i want the anointing to work i go to my closet and i do what i do to cause it to overflow because it's a channel for miracles that's why i teach you i say christianity does not begin and end in church church is a training center christianity is life in the spirit he said an enoch walked with god and was not because God took him. He said, knowing this first, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. He said, holy men of God speak as they were carried by the spirit of God. Christianity is a walk in the spirit until the spirit begins to carry you. And one of the ways it carries you is through the anointing on your head. Ezekiel said, I was in the spirit in the 30th day, on the first, on the fourth month, in the fifth day by the river Kabar. And I saw visions of God. He was carried in the spirit. On another time, he said, the spirit of the Lord took me by the lock of my hair and carried me to a dry bone, a mountain of dry bone. And he said, through the, the bones were dry. And the anointing began to converse with him. Mortal man, can these bones live? He said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. And he said, I prophesy as I was commanded. And dry bones became an exceeding great mountain. Mommy. You carry something, sir. You are not empty. Don't let any devil deceive you. You carry something. You may honor ministers. I do. You may honor patriarchs. I do. But I know I carry something, sir. I carry something. God has put something here. And I'm daring to stare that thing. And the more that thing grows, the more I dominate. The more it grows, the more I impart my generation. I carry something. You carry something. In addition to pastoral covering. In addition to prophetic direction. Stare the river. Jesus went to the man that was at the pool of Bethesda. He was there for 38 years. I'm not looking for facts. Will thou be made whole? And the man said, I've been here for 38 years. I've missed a thousand opportunities. When the water is there, nobody is there to carry me. We are not talking about opportunities. We are not talking about human connection. I know you don't know anybody to help you. I know you missed all the opportunity. But this is the word of life talking. Will thou be made whole? And the moment he spoke, affliction of 38 years ended listen the moment you catch the word and you know the errand of the word your life will change one word can be more important than 30 human connections one word can be more important than 25 opportunities one word can be more important than all your relationship in the palace because when the word comes even if it's not there the word will create and after the word creates the word sustains many people understand the bible because they can explain the english language but they don't have revelation of the word because they don't know the weight so when you say for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son they are explaining it cognitively that means god has a son that means god gave his son and if god gave his son that means our sins are forgiven but for those who know the weight of the word see the way paul interpreted that scripture in romans 8 32 if he did not withhold his son but gave him for us then he has already given us all things that's how people of understanding interpret the word so when god speaks all they see is their answer do you have revelation i know you can interpret scripture based on your understanding of the language but do you have a revelation of the errand of scripture that's what makes for miracles if the word of god goes forth be healed how do you respond to it somebody can be interpreting be healed as it means infirmity go away but another person who has revelation will catch it and stand up and begin to do what he couldn't do before. Because as far as he's concerned, my creation has come. My sustenance has come. They are two different people. You want to walk in miracles? You want to receive miracles? You must have a different revelation of the word. The word is not just something that makes sense. 
the word is the power to create the word is the power to sustain so when it comes beyond the cognitive interpretation that is your answer and the moment you can see the word as your answer your miracle is sure sit down for a moment anybody you see working miracles this is the revelation they have and you know what stirs your anointing me i live a fasted life so that i'll be volatile if you like meet me traveling don't joke if i shake like this it will overflow immediately because i know my own operate by fasting i need to be light so people who live around me know and then i spend a lot of time with worship especially songs that are like hymns as i'm hearing it after a while it is that's bubbly it starts bubbling. It starts. I know it is about to be. Sometimes I leave people and go somewhere. My, the thing we you will feel it rising inside, rising, rising. When it comes up like that, people who are around you sometimes you overflow on them. My friends know. I'll be just with them. I will sense the anointing. I'll just tell you, guys, like you have a cow. If I say it, the, the, the anointing flows. Somebody can sit with me and say, "Don't worry. I'm seeing that in the next one month, this thing will happen." I, I'm just, I'm just, the flow is, it, it intoxicates you. You know, it's be not drunk with wine. Where it is excess, but be filled with the spirit. See, when I'm hearing worship songs, a point God, especially when they start drawing it. As they are drawing it, the fountain begin to rise on my inside. And so when it starts happening, I add tongues. Maka, Liga, Barako, Zazakaya. Those kinds of tongues are not the common one. You're praying a prayer meeting. Boko, Boko, no. You, you are, you are swimming in the river. Because it's the real theme of the anointing you follow. There are times when the thing is heavy. As you are talking, after a while, you start prophesying. Laws come out of that realm. Because there is something on your life. And this is not for an apostle. This is not for a prophet. It's for everyone that believes. We were all baptized to walk in the spirit. The Bible said, God gave him the spirit without measure. And when he came to us, he said that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead it dwells that spirit lives here I am God's address I'm God's embassy when you want to find God trace me you will find him and I will not keep God on the inside many times I will shake so that God can appear many times I will stare so that God can overflow and when God begins to overflow miracles begin to happen that's why Jesus came into the temple in Luke 4 18 he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed Jesus said in John 7 38 he said they that believe out of their bellies not out of the belly of your pastor not out of the belly of your prophet out of their bellies shall flow not one river not two rivers not three rivers many rivers of living waters you carry something and when you allow that to flow you will see miracles until you'll be shocked I was watching some of the the videos and uploads of my brother Kings when he was here, he will, be, he will sit here. Come and take an announcement. This week, we want 20 souls. We want 2,000 souls. When he entered Cameroon, an apostle was not there. He went back and found what was in his belly. And today, he posted a picture. 15 years of blindness. Eyes open. 5 years of deafness. Ears open. And you'll see him with white suit. In the name of Jesus. Because now he is awoken. I carry something. I can't call apostle to Yaounde. I can't call apostle to Bamenda. I am the apostle in Bamenda. I am the apostle in Yaounde. So when a case comes, he finds his anointing. Rivers. Rivers of living water. Out of my belly, sir. The Bible said, do you see that although the disciples of Jesus saw more miracles than this woman, but this woman exercised more faith than them. So it's not about how much of faith you have. It's about how much of the exercise of faith that you have. But you see, many people don't process. Some of you, the miracles you've even had in your life already is enough to bet any other miracle you are looking for. Seven years ago, you had no money for school fees. The invincible finger of God appeared from nowhere connected the dots together school fees came out you graduated today you want to enter a business you say i am stranded and god is looking at you have you not understood anything from the actions of the past few years ago they told you ah this is your stomach challenge will kill you five years later everything vanished 
you didn't even know what you did about it and then something else confronts you and all you can say is that i am hopeless and then the angels are wondering how come men are so spiritually unintelligent does the things that happened in the past not suggest to you that nothing in the future can conquer you because in the past when you had no power of your own you were sustained is it now that you have grown in god that you'll be stranded the woman heard something and when she heard something she didn't relax she processed it and on the basis of what she processed she determined the action that she was going to take that means you are the one who determines when and how you receive your miracle she didn't say i will go and tell him to pray for me i may not have what it takes to get that level of protocol all i need to do is to touch and do you see what happened even jesus was not ready for her when she taught Jesus, he turned. Who touched me? Who touched me? Peter looked at Jesus and said, uh -uh, Sir, people are thronging you. They are not touching you. They are pressing you on every side. <laughs> they, are, they are almost molesting you, sir. Are you talking touch? Everybody is touching you. He said, no. Virtue went out of me. Somebody touched me differently. Somebody touched me from the place of understanding. So when a man has understanding of faith, everybody can come for a miracle service. Why he's coming, he said, the God that paid my school fees will give me a job. The God that saw me through the university will establish me in life. The God that saw me through sickness will also promote me. That's how you apply faith. So when you come to the miracle service, even before the man of God shows up, you have collected something. Virtue left me somebody took power from me i didn't give it she collected it that means even when god is not talking to you you can draw it's your choice to draw because the power is more than enough and when this woman did this thing others learn from it if you now study luke 6 19 the bible said many touched him and virtue left him and healed them all so this woman created a new pathway of receiving from god she became a patriarch she taught a generation that is not all the time you say, God help me. If God is passing touch, you can collect as much as you want. The world is Catalambano. So there is a faith that takes action based on understanding. So I can be coming for the miracle service. If I come, even if the pastor changes his mind and says, sorry, today is no longer miracle service, it's too late. I've already predetermined in my mind that the moment I enter that auditorium, my status will change. I've already predetermined in my mind that the moment the worship begins, I will receive something. So the thing has left the realm of the pastor. He no longer controls it. I have the power through understanding of how faith works to draw from God. <laughs> all around him yet he was afraid until the devil took advantage of that fear and he came and said the thing i fear have befallen me don't be like that rather be like david the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restored my soul he, he as it, just be like that even when you are in the middle of your enemies he said surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life not some days, all the days. Be like David. It's from glory to glory. So when the devil comes, tell him, you made a mistake. You should have come yesterday. I'm stronger today than I was yesterday. If you came yesterday, maybe you would have had a chance. Today you have failed. Because now I understand that I'm more than a conqueror. Now I understand that whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Now I know that the path of the just man is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Now I know there's no enchantment against Jacob. There's no divination against Israel. For the Lord God, the shout of the king is in the midst of them. Now I know that every enchantment of the devil shall be turned to foolishness. I know. I know that though the enemy may come in, but like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. Now I know, now I know, now I know, glory!
when I didn't know you couldn't kill me when I didn't know you couldn't conquer me now I know you made a mistake the Bible says surely they shall gather he said but they shall not be by me and he said every tongue that rises against you oh so when they gang up against you you are laughing oh they have made a mistake every tongue that rises against you is saying judgment thou shalt condemn when i lift my hand and i say glory to god something hits their camp and you start getting bigger better brighter and more glorious because that's your story i prophesy over someone shift to the next level in the name of jesus saturate your spirit sometimes you are lying on your bed and you are just laughing <laughs> there's no dull moment with you every day the word of god is just charging you up sometimes you wake up you dress up you stand in front of the mirror you say see the man the lord has helped you stand in front of the mirror you pack your hair backward you say see the lady the lord has helped I'm the glory of God. I'm shining with the light of His glory. Don't let the devil manipulate you until you get into depression. Even when you are not doing well, don't go and lie down and say, ha, I'm finished. No. He said, though the righteous man falls seven times, seven times he will rise again. He said, there is hope for a tree that is cut off. At the scent of water, it will rise again. What is the scent of water? The Holy Ghost, the word of God. And so I may be down, I lie down, I wake up. And said, this is a righteous man rising up from his fall. I move from glory to glory. Nothing can cut me off. Women receive their dead back to life that was a generation where women were not even permitted to come close to the altar they were not part of the priesthood but some of them insisted i carry something and they brought the dead back to life if you allow the anointing on your life to find expression you'll be sure don't let me fast don't let me worship don't let me pray and don't let me give one of the things that stem my anointing is generosity. The more I'm giving, the more the chambers are opening. The chambers are opening. If I pray for four hours, I'm volatile. I become like naked wire. Because there's something here. And it's not because I'm an apostle. It's because I am baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so everybody hearing me who is baptized in the Holy Ghost can command dimension. Do you know how the Bible describes us? It says you are a city set upon a hill every one of us has the capacity of a city is the anointing that's the bandwidth of that river it can flow until it takes the city and you will operate like a system and like a tribe sit down channels of routing miracles everybody possess these things i share it's not a prerogative of ministers it's for every believer number four is the name of Jesus in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 they say there's no name under heaven given by which men must be saved there's one name it's the name of Jesus and they showed us how to walk that name in Acts 3 from verse 6 to verse 8 the Bible said they went to the temple at the hour of prayer to pray they had not even prayed but they were conscious that they carried a weapon and they saw a man at the beautiful gate. Jesus too went through that temple. But you see, there are some things that are left for you. <laughs> because the Bible.
Bible said daily they brought that man there to beg. You know, people wake up and say, if it's Jesus, everybody must be healed. You are joking. Jesus went to the pool of Bethesda. He healed one man and left. Because there are times when the faith of people draw God to them. And there are other times when your faith draws you to God. You don't look for God, you will not receive some things. And it's not all the time God is drawn to you. That's why we are encouraged to seek Him. Are you following? Sit down for a moment. They are simple channels for routing miracles. Miracles are real, they are possible. And you can walk in them every day. Israel walked in miracles every day for 40 years. They were eating manna from heaven every day for 40 years. They walked in hell every day for 40 years. Their clothes grew with them every day for 40 years. The Shekinah was moving every day for 40 years. So miracle is not for once in a while. Until you mature to control it, you continue walking in it. Some people look at some of us and say, this is your season. I said, this is not my season. They said the part of the job is as a shiny light. It shines brighter and brighter. We will remain here until we leave this world. Don't think we are about to go up and come down. I'm not MMM. <laughs> Which one is this? Is your season. What you see today is nothing compared to what you will see tomorrow. So if you think you have seen anything, wait until I come out tomorrow. It will be from glory to glory. From power to power. From wisdom to wisdom. From grace to grace. Somebody shout! Is faith you have an understanding so you take action and this is the same friend i was telling you about last week he, he, he imagine my friend that i pray for is the one that showed me a scripture he said he read the scripture that that turned his head he said and isaac began to prosper and continue to prosper i say it's genesis 26 i know the scripture but you have brought it alive began to prosper continue to prosper until he became exceedingly great until the philistines envied him i said that is my story if you think yesterday was glorious, come today. And if you think today is good, check me out tomorrow. It's from glory to glory, from power to power. Because now I have a basis. And because I have a basis, I am bold to say, my tomorrow will be better than my today. My today is better than my yesterday. And it will continue like that. I'm not about to go down. I'm not about to fall. I'm just getting started. It's going to be one level of ascension to another level of ascension by the power of the Holy Ghost. Everybody that had results took action based on their faith. That was why they had the results they had. If you don't take those actions, you can never have those results. If you study the story of the woman with the issue of blood, that's one very unique story that brings out the picture very clearly. Mark 5, 25 to 34. Hear what the Bible says. I want to show you why most of us don't experience miracles. And then we are calling what is not the problem, the problem. is And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Follow. And had, and had suffered many things of many physicians. And had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Go to next verse. He said, when she had heard of Jesus, see her action. She heard about Jesus. That means she heard that this man touched people who were sick, they were healed. This man spoke to the dead, they came back to life. This man spoke to the deaf, they heard him. This man spoke to the blind, they saw. She didn't join in any argument. Immediately she heard. She took action from the standpoint of what she heard. What did she do? The Bible said she came behind in the press and touched his garment. Go to verse 28. It said, for she said. She had an understanding. If what they said about this man is true, then if I take any action, it will produce result. See, you are charged, you are charged. It's out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. Something is coming out of you now. Rivers, rivers, rivers. I may not know everything you need. Can you declare? Oh, 
They told you, you will not give birth to a child, you will start with twins. They told you, you will not get married, your marriage will be the talk of the town. They told you, your ministry will fail, you will become a patriarch in your generation. They told you, your business will fail, you will spawn so many other business. I prophesy over you, everything in you dying, the power of resurrection comes upon it now. Arise, shine, your light is come, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You see why the Bible said the just shall live by faith? You see why the Bible said we walk by faith, not by sensory perception? I've seen too much faithfulness of God to feel stranded, to feel depressed, to feel frustrated. No! A thousand times no. My life is a wonder to my generation. Not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the living God. Thank you, Father. This is just number two. We need to step down a little so that I can complete this matter. I'm just charged. I'm charged. And usually when I'm charged like this, my words become creative. See, this is when you talk. Sometimes keep quiet and charge first. And when you are charged in your bedroom, you sit down, you begin to write commandments. You begin to write laws. And some of those words go into five years of your future. And then you are coming behind gloriously in majesty and people are saying oh you are smart you are a strategist no i created the future by talking in the right atmosphere mondays have been giving to the church once again powers have been giving to the church once again for the priest to be born for the man to to be for the gate to be open for the powers to be taken for a lifetime my god you are about to shine 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 yeah. let your life give glory to god in the name